So anyway, we'll put him out. But and of course, you see the tools I'm using. We don't use tools that hurt them. You know, this is designed specifically for for venomous snakes. And we'll find a nice part of his body where it doesn't hurt him to move. And usually, in the middle of the body is where we try to. And we don't pick him up in the head or do anything that hurts him. So this is just a safe way to move the snake. You can see he's not struggling or anything like that. We just put him back in a something like that. So this again, this is far and away the most common species of venomous snake. We have we have non-venomous snakes that we see here too. Hot desert environments. We find them all over the state in, in some of the highest elevations. So we find them at 10, 11,000 feet in elevation. In fact, if we go south of our border into Mexico, we'll have rattlesnakes that occur at 16,000 feet in elevation. So again, rattlesnakes, and, and not just rattlesnakes, vipers in general. Uh, vipers occur in Sweden, north of the Arctic Circle. Um, they occur in in um, in Borneo and in places uh, you know and places where you never think vipers would occur. They, I mean, they occur at high, cold elevations. So, um, what's he focusing on? Just your moving hand? It's a, yeah, probably. Okay. You can see that, it, and so you can see their their eyesight is relatively good. In other words, this snake is afraid of me right now. Mm -hmm. So he's he perceives me as a threat. So you can see he's just kind of... Yeah, he's just looking at you all the yeah, time. Yeah, and of, of course he's got a long body, so that body he's vulnerable. So he, that's why he kind of coils up. Oh. He's kind of trying to make himself compact. Yep. And so he's less vulnerable. And of course the whole tongue flicking thing, what he's doing with his tongue, they don't smell with their tongue. Uh -huh. What the tongue is... Um, here's a less common snake, and this one is actually sort of interesting physiologically in that it's somewhat variable. This one's called a Mojave rattlesnake, and it looks somewhat similar um, in appearance. But what we found, this one here, depending on where it's found um, in Arizona, this one occurs in Arizona, California, into New Mexico and Texas. But this one has different types of venom composition. Um, in California, if you go, here's the Arizona border in California, this has a, what we call a type A venom, and it's all neurotoxic. In other words, if you're bitten, you probably won't have a tissue reaction, but you actually may stop breathing. So that's the, the neurotoxins um, acting. Right here in central Arizona, and actually in the Tucson area, this is probably a type B venom. And the type B venom actually has no neurotoxins at all. So it actually is, this is more of a hemorrhagic venom. So this is the one, if you talk to any of the wranglers, any of the cowboys, this is the one that they're all afraid of. This is the bad rattlesnake, the one that's really scary. And, um, but again, it doesn't behave any differently. This is not an aggressive or mean rattlesnake or anything else. But this one is, is probably the most, depending on the population, the most dangerous one to humans. And uh, the venom itself that does the damage, not, not the puncturing of the fang. So ultimately, these things are not uh, statistically a threat to human life. In 30 years of all the people walking around here in flip-flops, which you're wearing at night, uh, this is not the time of year to worry, but people wear these year-round. And these rattlesnakes are very common. We see them, the entrance to our dining area, those benches, we see them re resting there. Oh, really? Wow. On warm nights, when you're walking around here, there will be one within 30 feet of this building. Okay. They're all, they're, they're very, very common here. Okay. Nobody has ever been bitten. Ever. Okay. Because they're more scared of us. Well, exactly. But it just shows, but it's not a matter of being scared. Even when they're around, this is what they do. They sit. They're just very calm animals. So they, okay. they, they just, they, they cohabit yep. here in the grounds with wow. humans really? without any real negative interaction. So the fear of people have of snakes, whether it be North America or anywhere, is really based on religious and sort of cultural things that right. people learn. And a lot of it is just, and some of it is just kind of stupidity, and yeah. some of it is just learned, and that, 
the, the bottom line is you don't need to be afraid of snakes yeah. because uh, certainly these guys, you need to respect them and, and stay away from them. You don't need to be afraid of them. So, um, so this is the guy we see commonly. And it's widespread through Arizona. It's not found throughout our state, but it is certainly common right here on the ranch. So, and this, this is about uh, half grown. So in terms of size, it will get bigger, but even in Arizona, a big one might grow four feet, four and a half feet long. So now he stopped rattling, right? Yes. That because, doesn't mean that he's calm now? He's cal a little calmer now. Right, okay. Right. Okay. And um, so... Yeah, How did you get them? I caught this one. Just crawl it was crawling across the road here as I was driving in. What do you do for a living? Um, actually, I work in zoos and aquariums right now. I'm not working, but uh, I've spent most of the last 20 years of my life working in zoos. This is what I do. I work with hmm. creatures like this. So I keep them at home. I've always been around venomous snakes for the last, most of my life. Wow, so awesome. I have no, I've been bitten, so it's not fun. But I know even when I was bitten, I knew I wasn't going to die. So there was no, there was no panic. Okay. I knew I was in for an unpleasant experience. Okay. But I knew I wasn't going to die. Okay. So I had, had no fear. But you know, people who don't know think something terrible is about to happen. Yeah. So it, again, it's um, it, it's uh, it's not inconceivable, but people, you know, individuals react differently, you know, based on a number of factors. Right. But. Um, but again, now it's certainly in, in other, um, again, this group belongs to the pit vipers in, in, um, in India, Africa, a lot of areas, including parts of North America. We have a group of snakes called Alapid snakes. Alapid snakes are, belong to the cobras, and those are um, more, um, in terms of their evolutionary biology, they're more primitive. Mm -hmm. In other words, these snakes have movable, fangs that are actually on the maxillary, if you look at the structure of the jaw, they're long fangs. They're so long that they actually swing up. So that's an evolutionary um, function that is, is new. Uh, um, the elapid snakes have shorter fangs that are fixed. Oh. The cobras are like that. Mm -hmm. So the cobras are very um, primitive yeah. in terms of their um, uh, how they envenomate. But, um, that's the good thing. The bad thing is their venom is very potent. Yeah. So it's a neurotoxin is what they have. Yeah. So these guys, this particular snake has a hemorrhagic venom. If it were to bite you, you would see a lot of tissue destruction and swelling. It's very it ugly. Um, but it's generally not life-threatening. The next snake I'll show you has, it's a rattlesnake that has a neurotoxic venom. So it's a combination of, of efficient envenomation and dangerous, and dangerous toxicity. So, um, which makes it a pretty dangerous snake. So, but anyway, this is the guy, if you come back here next month, let's say the end of March, all the way through the warm months. And by the way, we don't see this guy during the hottest days. People tend to think rattlesnakes love heat. Yeah, but they don't lie. But um, we'll find rattlesnakes on cool nights, but um, on a hot day, if I put him out in the sun, they, they cook very quickly. Oh. So 90 degrees is lethal. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, they the snakes usually like like dark and moist. They well, not so much moist, but basically lizards have a much uh, physiological uh, tolerance to heat than snakes do. Cold blooded. Well, I don't like the term cold. No, really, no biologist likes the term cold blooded because cold is subjective. What is cold and what is warm? Endothermic and ectothermic. Yeah. In other words, right. um, biologically, um, uh, we are. Uh, endothermic, mm -hmm. or me metabolically, we maintain a constant temperature, yep. whereas snakes cannot. So uh, metabolically, they cannot. So in other words, behaviorally, in other words, they go in the shade when they get too hot. Mm -hmm. They bask in the sun when they want to. So their their temperature doesn't really fluctuate a whole lot, but but they cannot uh, generate heat metabolically. So that's why in the in the cool months, uh, right now they don't hibernate, but they're dormant. Because okay. it's cold. Okay. And so, um, but, but their blood is really not cold. And conversely, I, I found these guys crawling through snow. Oh, oh really? Okay. Wow. So they will be active actually when it's cold. But on a hot day, if you put them out on, on let's say it's 100 degrees, well, the ground temperature may be 120 degrees. So if I put him on the sun in about two minutes, he will die. He'll die. Whereas you and I, we might get hot, but we'll sweat, and so our body can compensate. Correct. 
Whereas a, a dog will pant. Yep. Because a dog, a bird mm -hmm. will also pant. A lizard will actually physiologically still, you know, have means of, but a snake doesn't do well. So snakes actually thermoregulate by going underground. So mm -hmm. all these rodent burrows you see are utilized by snakes. They go underground. Uh, Earth is a great um, um, thermal kind of barrier. In other words, they go underground and it's 70 degrees. Oh. So that's how snakes cope with heat. So when you see a lot of Western movies where a rattlesnake is sitting out in full sun, you know it's not true. Okay. So um, <laughs> they will come out and bask on nice, you know, uh, mid-80s, but they don't take much heat. Okay. So, um, so that's why generally on deserts, you know, they go, well, it's a Sonoran Desert. What do they do in the middle of the summer? They come out at night. And that's when their food is out, too. Rodents, you don't see much activity on a hot day in the summer. But you come out here at 3 in the morning with a flashlight, that's when all the activity, that's when the rodents are out, and that's when these guys are out here, too.